everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to another video at Permit.io. Today, we're going to talk about RBAC, but more specifically, we're going to showcase three real life examples of what actually RBAC looks like, so you can really start to imagine and picture it in your head, especially when you're struggling with a problem and you need to figure out how to apply it. Now, what is RBAC? And probably some of you may be asking. Now, RBAC stands for Role Based Access Control. Now, Role Based Access Control is the simplest policy model that we can have and we can apply to our applications. Now, what does RBAC mean? Well, it means that you have a user who logged in and is part of the current session. Now, that user has some role assigned to them, for example, an administrator, and that administrator maybe can view a document. That's what we would consider a very simple role-based access control policy. Now, why is having permissions important? Why is it something that we need to think about as a fundamental building block of starting any application? Well, after a user successfully logs in and he goes through the authentication process, well, then that user now exists and he needs to have permissions to do certain things. Obviously, when we're dealing with data or when we're dealing with parts of application that maybe we don't want to expose to our end customers, well, depending on the role that they have, they should be able to perform specific things and their uh, permissions or the things that they can do within the application should be limited based on the person that logs in. For example, we might have a user who just joined a, a, a streaming portal and they don't have a subscription. So therefore, they cannot view all the streaming services or all the streaming uh, series uh, that they might want to watch or movies. On the other hand, if someone has paid, well, their role should accordingly change and therefore they maybe should get access to more permissions. Uh, and in this case, this is why permissions are just a fundamental building block of designing any application. Now, let's actually talk about some real life examples of RBAC. So you can really picture it and imagine what RBAC actually looks like. Now, the first one we're going to focus on is an online banking system. Now, how do we model that? When defining RBAC, the first thing we do is decide on the types of roles that we're going to have within the system. Now, for an online banking system, we're going to have a customer role, a bank cashier, and a bank manager. And each one of these roles will have some sort of elevated permissions or very bespoke permissions to that specific role. The other thing we need to uh, define as we're creating an RBAC policy is the resources that those roles will be able to interact with and the amount of permissions or the actions that they may have on these permissions. Now, the actions don't and won't depict exactly what they can perform will then create a policy that's going to decide what each role can do. And you'll see that in just a second. Now, in this case, we have resources and actions and the resources that these three roles could potentially interact with. We've named loans, accounts, and transactions. Now for each type of this resource, we also define the actions that a user or a role could perform on this resource. So in this case for loans, we can view the loan or approve the loan. In the case of accounts, we can view the account, we can manage the account, or we can transfer money to the account, whether it is transferring money in or out of the account. And then we might have transactions. We can view transactions, we can process transactions, and we can create deposits and make withdrawals. Now, how do we actually go ahead to model this? Well, for that, we can actually see it inside of Permit.io, which is a no-code UI interface that just abstracts away from the complexity and lets you create this very, very easily. Now, for the first two examples, we're going to look at a policy that has already been made in Permit. And for the last example, we're going to actually focus on creating one ourselves. And you'll see how easy it is. Now, let's actually jump into Permit. Now, in general, creating your own policies is extremely difficult because it requires you learning a policy language that might be completely new to you, and it requires you to learn how to write that code, which is probably very unfamiliar. And it's difficult, and it's a big learning curve for any engineer. Now, if you want to do it the simple way and use the no-code UI, you can go to app.permit.io, register your organization, and you're good to go. Now, in this case, what you can see is my app.permit.io screen. Here I navigated to my policy. Here I navigated to my roles and I have already created a bunch of roles here. Now, if you want to add a new role, you just click on the add role button and it just creates it very easily. And we'll see that at the end of this video. Now we have created our roles such as a customer, a bank cashier and bank manager that we have defined previously. And then we need to create our resources. So the, the, the things that the role will be able to interact with and the bespoke actions that we'll be able to perform on each resource. Now, in this case, as we talked about it, we created the loan, we created accounts and transactions. These are the things that a specific role might be able to interact with. And then, and then 
And then underneath each resource, we define the bespoke actions that we can perform. In this case, we have the view and approve action. For accounts, we have manage, view, and transfer money. And for transactions, we have view, process withdrawals, and process deposits. Now, once we define all of this, then we can actually go ahead to our policy editor and you can see all of this start to get mapped out. So rather than writing the complex code, all you have to do is just start checking the specific boxes for the actions you want to perform on the resource for that specific role that you can then assign to a user that has logged in. Now, in this case, we have already defined the roles and we have already defined the resources and the actions and we have already checked and built our policy. So as an example, in this case, you can see that a bank cashier can process deposits. So can a bank manager, but a, but a customer cannot do that. On the other hand, the customer can transfer money, but a bank cashier cannot, right? And this is a very simple policy. And this is an RBAC policy that you can start to enforce with our application level uh, enforcement point that you embed into your application. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Now onto the second example for mapping an RBAC policy, which is the social media platform. Now here in this case, we'll create three roles. We'll create a regular user, a moderator, and an administrator. And in that same way, we start to map out our resources and actions. So we'll create a resource called posts, where we'll have actions like comment, like delete, moderate, post updates. Then we will create a user's resource, which will have actions such as message, ban, manage, add and remove moderators. And then finally, a system settings resource with actions such as change and access analytics. So let's see that mapped into permit. Now in that same way, we're in the policy editor, we're under roles and we can see the three defined roles that we have here, an administrator, a moderator and a regular user. In that same way, we've defined a bunch of resources. So posts, users, system settings. And for each one of these, we define the appropriate actions that we wants to be working with. And you can see some actions, there might be a lot. And on other cases, there might be very little. It depends on the policy that you're designing. And then finally, we go into the policy editor. We can see the roles defined. We can see the resources defined, the bespoke actions. And as you can see per different role, that policy changes. An administrator doesn't have access to any posts, but a moderator can delete and moderate those posts. And a regular user can comment, like, and post updates. And the same thing goes for administrator. He can deal with system settings, but on the other hand, a moderator nor a regular user has the access to do so. And therefore we're building up that simple RBAC policy. Now let's move on to the third and final example, the one that you guys have been waiting for, because rather than just looking at a pre-made already created policy, we're actually going to build this one ourselves step by step. Let's build a retail store system. Now, what do we need to define here? Well, as the roles, we'll need a cashier, a supervisor, and a store manager. Now for the resources, well, we'll have sales, which will have the view process and return actions. Then we'll have a customer, which will have the view and assist actions. And then finally, we'll have a store management resource, which will have the create report, schedule meeting, and manage inventory. So. Let's take it into permit and actually build this ourselves. All right, so we're back again in the permit app and we're in the policy editor. And now if we look at under policy editor, roles or resources, you'll see that we have nothing. So let's go ahead and actually create it. So let's start with our three roles that we've defined. Now let's create a role. And the first one is called a cashier. So we just type in their name, the key automatically generates. We can type in the description if we wish and let's save this role. And let's do the same thing for two other roles. Uh, so the next role will be a supervisor. And the final role will be a store manager right there. And there we go. So we define the three roles. That's how simple it is. Now let's build our resources. So let's create our first resource. And the first resource is going to be called sales. Now, as you can see, the key again generates on its own, but the actions are already pre-populated. Now, these are actions that are just loaded by default, but you don't have to use them. So you can just either click an X on them or you can just delete them with a backspace. Now, the actions we have for sales is view. We have an action called process and we have an action called return. So these are the actions we defined and we can now save this resource. And again, now that we have our first resource, we can see that these are the actions and this is the resource we've made. So let's do that with the two other resources as well. So the next one is called a customer. And in this case here, we can uh, view and assist and we can save this. And then we can add the file resource, which is store uh, management. 
and the actions for store management will be uh, create a report. Then we'll have a schedule schedule meeting and manage inventory. And now once we have done that, we have now generated our resources of the actions. We have our roles. And if we look into the policy editor, you'll notice that this policy now populates. However, the cashier, the store manager, or the supervisor, they don't have any permissions as of yet. So now, rather than writing the complex code that can be understood by the specific policy engines that are out there, well, for us, it's just as simple as checking some boxes. So in this case, a cashier, well, he can assist the customer. A cashier can process maybe some sales and return some sales. But And a store and a cashier, can he manage the store? Well, no, he cannot. Then for a store manager, well, he can view sales, he can process them and return them. He can maybe create a report, but maybe he cannot manage inventory and schedule a meeting. And he has nothing to do with customers in this case. And then finally, a supervisor, well, a supervisor can actually do everything. So not only he can manage customers' sales, but he can also create reports, manage, res uh, manage inventory, and schedule meetings. And once we have defined this, well, all we need to do is just save those changes. What happens in the background is that policy gets generated in real time, that code gets produced, and it gets sent to the policy engine for it to understand. But for this example, we're only learning how to build those simple RBAC policies. And that's it. That's how simple it is. The last part, though, is how do you actually enforce this within your application? So let me show you. Well, you can do it for our simple permit.check function. Once your user logs in, they get a unique session and therefore a unique identity for who they are. So it's something that can be fetched from the JSON web token. Now that unique identity is what syncs with permit and therefore identifies what type of role that user has. And this is the unique identity that you pass in as the user ID as the first parameter. Now, the other parameters, well, as you can probably guess, the action will be the action that we're performing and the resource will be the resource we're performing that action on. So in a simple case scenario, if we have an action called delete and we have a resource called document, and if that action is checked underneath that resource called document, then the user who's currently logged in, who has that role for that specific policy definition, will be able to delete that document. And this is how complex it gets. Now, RBAC is the simplest policy model, so make sure that you check out our other videos where we talk about RBAC and ABAC and RBAC so you can actually learn more and see how those are configured within Permit. But for now, that is all. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next video.